Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful morning here in southeastern North Carolina, and today I wanted to discuss with you how to maximize your fig production on very, very young trees, especially first-year transplants. And this video is going to be specifically about container fig trees. This is not going to be about in-ground fig trees. That's a totally different game. So if you're container growing fig trees, we want to discuss how can you have an amazing first year or an amazing second year on very, very young fig trees. So in front of me is my fig tree orchard and every single tree out there was a rooted cutting over the winter. They were transplanted at the earliest in March and in the latest in May. So all of these trees are no more than a few months old. The only exception is my Violette de Bordeaux, which I bought uh, last summer, and it had not gone through a full fruiting season. So this is its first fruiting season as well. And for the most part, every single one of my trees are huge and absolutely loaded with fruit and I'll take you through the fig orchard very briefly and show you a few examples and then explain to you a few tips and tricks as to what I did to get this incredible production on such young trees. Over the course of this video I will be mentioning a number of products that I've used in my garden that I feel are responsible for my success so I will make sure to link to all of those products in the video description below. Be sure to check it out. When growing any kind of plant, there are really only three things that a plant can do with its energy. It can grow roots, it can grow new leaves and stems, and it can grow fruits. So at any given time throughout the year, it is doing all three of those and it's a constant balancing act. So my first step, step number one, you want to select an appropriately sized container for your first year fig trees to transplant them into. And what you have here, you have five gallon paint buckets from, one is from Home Depot and one is from Lowe's. Now a five gallon paint bucket is a totally different size than a five gallon nursery container. A five gallon nursery container is something like three point something gallons, I forget. But these are closer to a 10 gallon nursery pot than they are a five gallon nursery pot. And the nice thing about these 
these uh, containers is they're incredibly cheap and they're very sturdy and I found them to be the perfect size for my first year transplants and I will link to a video above that will show you how to drill them out to use them for planting your fig trees. Now when you first transplant your fig trees it's going to look like they're going through a period of dormancy or shock where they're not having a lot of initial growth very quickly but what's actually happening is the first thing your fig trees are doing is they're trying to grow a vigorous root system to feed the tree and search out water. So that's kind of the first thing that your new tree transplants are going to put the majority of its energy into. So while you can start with something huge like a 20 gallon or a 25 gallon pot and put your transplants in it, it's going to spend so much time trying to grow out an extensive root system that it is actually going to suck a tremendous amount of energy from the tree and it's not going to put on as much leafy growth and fruit as heavily as if you root bound it uh, the very first season. So here in these pots you have just the perfect amount of root boundedness in there. So that's the balancing act that you have to work out your very first year. You can't have the pots so small that they get too quickly root bound and they can't support a lot of fruit. And you also can't have pots that are so large that they grow too extensive of a root system and they don't produce a lot of foliage and a lot of fruits the very first, the very first year. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get this, these five gallon Home Depot or Lowe's paint buckets or something like a 10 gallon nursery pot because that was just the perfect amount of root boundedness for me to get great amounts of green growth and lots and lots of fruit production but also enough uh, roots that it could support those fruits and those leaves. All right, now that we've discussed root binding our plants and limiting the amount of root growth to an appropriate number on our first season, what we want to do is we want to discuss timing of the transplants for your first year figs. Now, in my climate, my last chance of frost is usually around uh, the last week of March. So you have to tailor this logic to your own climate. While you cannot leave your potted container trees uh, outside to get frosted on, you can plant them early prior to the last chance of frost. So what I did was I actually started transplanting the majority of my trees in the beginning of March, about three weeks before my last chance of frost. And what I did was uh, when the low temperatures at night showed a chance of frost, I brought them inside my garage. But I would set them out during the day to give them a head start. And it's important to give them extra heat so you can get a little bit of a jump start in the season. So maybe your last chance of frost isn't until May 1st in your climate, but you get pretty warm daytime temps in April. So maybe transplant your transplants uh, into larger containers, uh, up pot them, uh, April 1st and just carry them out in the day. Yes, it's a lot of extra work, but you can you can really get a jump start in the season by doing that. And I will link to a video above as to how to up pot your transplants. I made a video on that earlier in the year. So that's that's step two, getting a little bit of an early jump on the season if you can. The third step is that you want to try and increase the metabolic rate of your plants to get them to grow in fruit as quickly as possible. And to do that, I purchased this wonderful black plastic fabric weed barrier. Now this is not to be confused with garden fabric, which you can cut holes in and uh, plant plants into to keep the weeds down. Uh, this is a plastic, very thick weed barrier that will kill anything uh, that you put underneath it. It'll kill the grass underneath it. And the nice thing about this weed barrier is because it's black and because it's thick, it holds a tremendous amount of heat and it creates a microclimate for your figs. So if I move over here and I place my camera on this weed barrier, it is noticeably hotter right here than it is on my grass. And I would say this has to be adding at least three to five degrees of heat. And when it's in the 80s and 90s in the summertime, this may not be very advantageous for you. But in the early spring, when temperatures are inconsistent, and some days it's in the 50s, some days it's in the 70s, adding another five degrees of heat, but using this black plastic, 
will give your fig trees a tremendous boost to its metabolism. And that means it'll get to the fruiting stage earlier. It's going to go through the root growth stage first, then it's going to go through the leafing stage next and grow nice big leaves and stems because the leaves are the solar panels of the plant and they can't collect energy from the sun without nice big leaves. And then after it's accumulated enough energy with the leafy solar panels, it will try and grow fruits next. So the, the, the faster you can get through each of those stages and get to the fruiting phase, the faster you will get fruits and therefore the earlier it'll ripen. So I'm going to link in the description below uh, a link to this weed barrier and this is the best probably $75 that I've spent because I really believe that it has it has been a tremendous help getting my figs acclimated and uh, growing quicker and another added benefit is for my other for my other trees or my other vegetables like my watermelon and zucchini since they're not laying in the ground or in the dirt they've had much less pressure from pests so it's also kept pest pressure down quite a bit so that's a little bit of an added benefit not to mention reduced my weeding to zero all right step four and what I believe is the most important step of all to have success is your fertilizing technique now I'm going to link above to a fertilizing video that I created back in June that in depth goes over all of the specifics of, of fertilizing your figs and in that uh, in that video, I promoted a very balanced uh, fertilizing schedule, and I stand by that schedule. If you are not good with fertilizers, and you don't want to put a tremendous amount of thought into this, and you want something easy to just go on cruise control and get good results, I believe that simply stick to that fertilizing video, and you will have good results. What I want to go into here is a more detailed approach for the people that want to maximize production because I made a few tweaks to my fertilizing video over the course of the year and I feel that I've hit the nail on the head for how to fertilize your video uh, for how to fertilize your figs uh, the very first year and moving forward to maximize fruit production but this is more complicated so if you don't want to go through this process simply watch the video tagged above on fertilizing figs. If you do want to try and maximize production, I'm going to go through exactly what I did right now. So a little crash course on fertilizing. Uh, on every fertilizer, you will see three numbers. The first number, let me zoom in on there for you. The first number, three, represents nitrogen, and nitrogen will grow leaves and stems on the plants. The leafy green growth, that is mostly sustained by nitrogen. The second number, the five, that is phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus is a mineral that will promote the growth of roots, uh, flower blooms, and fruits. So phosphorus is very important for the blooming and uh, fruiting process. Six represents potassium. Uh, potassium is the precursor uh, it's the precursor element for all the chemical reactions that occur within the fig so all or any kind of plant so all of the biological reactions are supported by uh, potassium and that promotes the overall health of the plant so nitrogen phosphorus potassium and if you remember your periodic table of elements you'll hear n PK or your NPK ratio on fertilizers typically referred to in uh, fertilizing videos for help on your garden. So all of these products I will link in the description of the video below, but these are primarily the products that I use to great success this year. Uh, you have an organic bone meal, which is a huge source of phosphorus. You have an all-purpose fertilizer. Um, something like a 555 is fine. I bought this because it was the best deal. As long as your, your three numbers are very close together, they're not spaced too far apart, it's pretty good you'll be just fine. We have three chemical soluble fertilizers. Uh, this expert garden is just a knockoff of miracle Grow all-purpose. And then we have Alaska Fish Fertilizer, which is extremely high in nutrients. Uh, that's my secret weapon in most cases. Alaska Fish Fertilizer has a tremendous amount of micronutrients, but it does stink to high heaven. Just be warned. So, I kept all of my fertilizing techniques the same when it comes to my organic fertilizers, but it is the chemical soluble fertilizers that I rotated throughout the season. And this is what I did. 
again in my in my uh, fertilizing video I only show you to use the tomato miracle Grow because its NPK ratio is 18 18 21 so it's very balanced and it gives your plants everything that you need but what I did was I messed with uh, different ratios of fertilizing through the initial transplant to the fruiting phases to try and maximize what I believe the plants needed so uh, if you watch my fertilizing video, what I did was I took uh, I took a five gallon Home Depot bucket, filled it with water, and I added two scoops of Miracle Grow tomato. So that equates to three tablespoons and a big glug, probably about a quarter cup of the <clears throat> of the fish fertilizer. So what I really did in my true practice is in the beginning of the year when I transplanted my figs initially. My first two fertilizing cycles, I used Miracle Grow All Purpose, which is eight, uh, which is 24816. So it's very high in nitrogen. And the reason why my first two feedings were with this is because I was trying to establish a lot of leafy, uh, leafy growth. And because it's so high in nitrogen with this 24 number right here, that is something that is going to promote a lot of green leafy growth. So I only poured that on my plants the first two times to give it a, a big jump in nitrogen. After that, I discontinued use because I, I want to promote fruiting and throughout the season. And if you give it too much nitrogen, it'll be a big, bushy, beautiful looking tree with lots of leaves and no fruits. So after that, this gets tossed. After my first two feedings, I went consistently only using the tomato food because it is so balanced. Its ratio is 18, 18, 21, if you can see that, and that will give your plant everything it needs to grow healthily. So for several months, I only used the miracle Grow tomato food along with the Alaska fish fertilizer and, of course, my regular applications of uh, my 356. Now, this is the tricky part. In June, when I started seeing the first, uh, fig, uh, the first figlets form on my trees, what I started doing was I started mixing 50% Bloom Booster, 50% tomato plant food. So in that five gallon bucket, I now used one green scooper of the tomato and one green scooper of the Bloom Booster. Because your Bloom Booster, if you can see that, is 15-30-15. It has a ton of phosphorus in it, and phosphorus will promote flowers and fruiting. And since figs are really just an inverted flower, flowering the fig trees is the same as growing figs. So that's what I did. So the equation came down to being 1.5 tablespoons of tomato, 1.5 tablespoons of Bloom Booster, and then the typical quarter cup glug of fish fertilizer and I started doing that in about the middle of June and I continued that until the end of July and I've got tremendous fruit production after I started using the bloom booster and I'm definitely going to do that again next year the other thing that I did was when when I make my container mixes and I'll link a video above for how I make my container mixes. I always add a lot of bone meal to the mix because bone meal promotes, uh, promotes healthy root growth. So in that first stage, I give it a nice dusting of the bone meal to promote, uh, to promote the root growth. The other thing I did was when I saw the first double bumps at the nodes and the first figlets forming, I dusted all the soil of my trees with more phosphorus. Now this is an organic phosphorus, so it takes a long time to break down in the soil, but I wanted to support the fruits and giving it a slow release form of phosphorus uh, that slowly breaks down throughout a couple of months. I wanted that inside my fig containers while the fruiting cycle began. Again, this is all very specific, so if you find this schedule too complicated, uh, feel free to just use the fertilizing regimen that is in my fertilizing video, and you'll have really good success. This, I believe, just gave everything an additional boost, and it's why my fig production went from really good to extreme on such early trees. And my fifth and final tip is simple. Just make sure to spend time in your garden every single day. There's no such thing as a green thumb. There are gardeners that spend time in their garden, and there are gardeners that don't. Just like raising children, 
the more time you spend with your plants, the more attention you pay to them and the more care you give them, uh, the better they will tend to do as they grow. And that doesn't mean stand over them nonstop, just like children. Don't helicopter. <laughs> you know, give them the attention that they need and let them do their own thing. But every single day you should be passing through your garden to make, so to make sure that the soil is not too wet, that it's not too dry, that leaves aren't dropping, that figs aren't dropping. You should be checking for pests. And it doesn't take long. I usually spend five to ten minutes a day passing through and just looking at everything, usually once in the morning and once in the evening to make, make sure that things aren't too dry and too wet. If you monitor your trees every single day, you'll pick up on their little cues and you'll, you'll see how their different habits of growth progress throughout the year and, and you'll learn a thing or two. You don't have to make this a full-time job, but you should be checking on things daily. So those are my tips for growing young fig trees and first-year transplants. I've had a tremendous amount of success doing this, and I hope that you take some of the principles and apply them to your own garden. And I hope that you report back and you tell me if they've helped. And if you have any other suggestions or you want to share your experiences, please write them in the comments below. Everyone, thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more videos like these and for future updates. As I mentioned before, I will place all of the links to the products that I mentioned in the description of the video if you choose to purchase any of these and employ them in your own garden. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again next time.